Good morning. What a great privilege it is to be here today. What I hope that you take away from my presentation is that inspiration can come from anywhere. No matter what field you work in, you can find inspiration in some of the most unexpected of places. And when I was five years old, my older sister brought home a poster of the moon from school. I was fascinated by it. I wanted to go there. In fact, from five till all the way through high school, I wanted to be an astronaut. It was my goal to be the first woman on the moon. Now, my life plan has been a little bit different since, since high school, but this project that I'm working on now has given me the opportunity to fulfill that childhood dream and to, to enjoy that excitement of space exploration. So let me tell you a little about HanaFlex. HanaFlex is a solar array um, that would wrap around a spacecraft and be used to power either that spacecraft or um, to provide energy for, as a clean energy source for Earth. We call it HanaFlex because Hana means flower in Japanese. And of course, origami is the Japanese art of paper folding. And as you can see, as it unfolds, it kind of looks like a flower. Now, the solar panels that are on this solar array work much like the solar panels you might see on a house in areas of high sun. Um, these solar panels collect energy from the sun, convert it into electricity, and that's used, in this case, to heat their pool. In our case, we might use these solar panels to enable missions to Mars or beam energy back to Earth by microwave radiation. Um, the possibilities are really endless. Now, I grew up loving space and wanting to explore it, but I know that's not everyone's dream. Although, I'm willing to bet that there are several people out there who did want to be an astronaut at some point during your childhood. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, great. Well, regardless of what your childhood aspirations might have been, the, it, the technologies that come out of, out of space exploration really benefit our lives here on Earth. I'll give you a few examples. First, the health field is full of examples of what we call spin-off technologies. And these are things that have been developed because of the research done to push the boundaries of science and technology for space exploration. So even though my inner child is really excited about this idea of space exploration, I also get to fulfill a little bit of a higher dream um, of helping make the world a better place. What about memory foam mattresses or pillows? That came out of, science, of NASA research as well, as did things like the Nerf Super Soaker, um, invisible braces, scratch-resistant lenses, and even in-ear thermometers. These are just a few of the many examples of things that we might not have if not for space, re space exploration. Okay. From 1969 to 1972, this was a really exciting time for space exploration, especially human exploration of space. We put six successful missions on the moon, earning 12 men the enviable distinction of having walked on the moon. So the prospect of space travel was really exciting then for about those four years. But today, about the farthest you can travel is the International Space Station, which is still really cool, but it's in low Earth orbit, which is only about 200 miles above the Earth. And even then, these days, we have to go all the way to Russia just to catch a ride. So we've stalled in our human exploration of space. We are sending rovers to Mars, but how far away are we from sending manned missions? And what are the limitations that keep that from happening? Well, one of those big limitations is power. Just to get from Earth to Mars, it's an eight-month journey at a minimum. And when we send a rover, well, we don't have to keep a lot powered during the flight. They don't breathe, they don't really care if their light's on or not. But if we're sending people, then that becomes a bigger concern. So we need ways to provide power or electricity for this eight-month journey for people that are traveling um, to Mars or other planets. Another great example are the Voyager spacecraft. Now, Voyager 1 and 2 were both launched in 1977, and they're still traveling in space. In fact, they're reaching the edge of our solar system now. Um, these two, with their 37 years in space, longer than I even have been alive, um, have, have hold the record now for the longest missions um, that NASA has been able to support. However, they're powered by nuclear energy, which is a great thing, except that it's going to run out in about five years, so we won't receive any more information back from them. 
But if we were able to incorporate these really large solar arrays, especially if that was included with a, an, a nuclear en energy source, then perhaps we could design a mission that had a 50 or 100 year lifetime. And who knows what we might learn then. But to do that, we need to figure out how we're going to fit these ever larger solar arrays into the rockets that will launch them into space. Well, Hanaflex is a great solution. Here we've used principles of origami, this artistic means of expressing oneself, to create an array that can fold up in a way that will, will fit inside of the rockets. Um, we started, of course, in paper, because origami is naturally a paper model. And when you fold origami, your patterns are is assuming a zero thickness material. Paper is thin enough that that usually works. Although if you've ever tried to fold a paper, I think it's after seven times you can't fold it in half anymore, you realize that even with very thin substances, thickness becomes an issue. Well, the, especially when we're folding something like solar panels. Um, you can imagine folding a sheet of iPads. You have these things that are brittle, that aren't flexible, unless maybe it's the iPhone 6 Plus, um, <laughs> and, and can easily crack. So we have to find a way to accommodate for thickness and for that inflexibility. We therefore collaborated with an origami mathematician to modify the folding pattern. The original folding pattern shown on the left, which maybe doesn't show up super well, but it's just straight lines basically. We modified that so we could accommodate for thickness. And that's shown on the right. And you see this piecewise curvature which means when the model is all folded up, there's actually a discrete distance specified between subsequent layers of panels. So we can essentially fold this sheet of iPads. Now, this example isn't actually a manned spacecraft, but to illustrate why it might be important to have these larger arrays, let's assume that this spacecraft can support one person. So we've got four little solar panels on there. It can support one human aboard the spacecraft. If we want to send more people or for a longer amount of time, then we need to increase the amount of solar rays that are on there. But just adding, well, this was really easy because I did it in Photoshop, but just, <laughs> just adding a couple extra panels um, can be costly. In fact, the International Space Station sent up, they have now eight solar arrays on the station, but they sent those up in, in several different launches. And each launch, it costs $10,000 per pound to launch something into space. So we want to send it up as compactly as we can. And that brings us to some of the unique benefits of the Hanaflex design. You can see how it kind of wraps around this central hub. And that central hub could, in fact, be the spacecraft itself, which becomes really, hey, there we go, a really convenient way to avoid wasting space because the, any, any volume that would have been empty in that folded pattern is now occupied by the, by the spacecraft itself. A second aspect of this folding pattern that's really unique, well, we start off with a flat sheet when it's deployed, but during its launch state, of course, it's folded up. And you can see that the panels start to rotate and come up vertical against the sides of the spacecraft. But also, we have something that no other folding pattern, or solar array, at least, currently has, and that's that we can fix the height when it's folded closed. Um, you can see here a video of how it folds closed, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that fixed height is. But we're going to put this inside of a rocket, and it has a fixed volume of space. And so the fact that we can constrain our height and continue to grow the array becomes really, really convenient. So here's an example of the rocket we might launch this in. Right here, the second triangle that begins that's where we call our second ring of the pattern. And with this folding pattern, we can actually add additional rings so that we can continue to increase our deployed size, but we're only minimally increasing the stowed diameter and our height isn't changing at all. So that fixed volume that we have in our launch vehicle or our rocket, we can maintain within those parameters. All right. Now there's another great, and I alluded it to it before, but another big limitation of space travel is cost. If it's going to cost $10,000 per pound, then we've got to do these things as compact and lightweight as possible. And origami provides us some great solutions um, for achieving that. 
Solar panels are one possible way where we might apply origami, but another one that I'll tell you about is a solar sail. And we call it a solar sail because it's a lot like a sail on a sailboat. The solar, solar sails are using solar radiation pressure, um, this force just from the radiation of the sun's rays. We can't feel it here because it's a really, really small force, but in space, if we can put up a large enough sheet, a large enough sail, then we can use that as an essentially free and infinite propulsion source. So the idea would be to fold up as, as large an array as we can, or as large as a, a sail as we can, and then use this to travel perhaps beyond the solar system, because the solar radiation pressure provides a constant acceleration. So we can continue going forever. Now, because we want it to be really lightweight in our launch vehicle, we want to use a thin material. And a great candidate material for this is mylar, which is the same stuff that those silver birthday balloons are made from. So we would take this big sheet of silver birthday balloon material and fold it up as small as possible, stick it inside our rocket, lock, launch it into space. What we've designed so far would fold up smaller than a tissue box, but open up to about half the size of a basketball court which is a pretty, pretty good uh, ratio of stowed to deploy diameter. But that's just the beginning. Our objective is to eventually fly a solar sail with one kilometer square sails, which is a little la larger than Atlanta's Piedmont Park. So big. Things like solar sails, maybe these can take us beyond the space, our solar system. And maybe these solar array concept can be used as a clean energy, for, energy source for us here on Earth. And those ideas might sound a little bit science fiction-y, but the work that goes into turning that fantasy into reality really has, ben has benefits for us here on Earth. And that's what's exciting for me. Even now, when I look up in the night sky, I am amazed by the immensity of space. And it's not just about being able to identify stars or planets or galaxies. It's recognizing that we're just a pinprick in the fabric of the universe. And there's so much out there to explore and discover and learn, and it's my hope that each of us, in our individual journeys, will recognize the little bits of inspiration that will help us change the world, uh, whether that's through origami or, or something else. And not just for space travel, although I'm still half hoping to be the first woman on the moon, but in whatever our respective fields are. Thank you.